daily life in Sumer. You are there. It's 2300 BC. You've been learning metalworking from your father. You began by watching him carefully melt copper and tin together to make bronze. Then, he showed you how to hammer the hot bronze into different shapes. You've practiced using his tools so much that they now seem like parts of your own hands. Finally, your father says that the bronze cups you've made are good enough to sell or trade. At last, this is the day you've been waiting for. You're going to the marketplace to sell your very own cups. You wonder how many you'll sell and how much silver you'll get for them. Life in a city-state. Picture an ancient Sumerian city. Imagine the glistening ziggurat that stood in the center of the city. All around the ziggurat were temples and other buildings. The Sumerian cities were centers for trade, government, and religion, and the area around the ziggurat was where much of this happened. Without agriculture, Sumerian city-states could not have survived or grown. People in the cities relied on the work of farmers, herders, and fishers who lived in small villages or towns near the cities. Each day, they brought meat, fish, grain, and fruit to city markets. They produced more than enough food for themselves and the growing populations in the cities. City dwellers often lived in different parts of the city, depending on the kind of work they did. For example, craft workers set up shop in a part of the city with others who did similar work. Their small shops lined the narrow streets and often craft workers and their families lived above or behind their shops. They passed their skills down from generation to generation. Some hardly ever left their part of the city. Government and Law The ruler's palace and the homes of important people were built close to the ziggurat. From the palace, officials governed the city's day-to-day -day activities. Besides controlling surpluses of food and collecting taxes, the officials settled disputes and took part in making new laws. They also oversaw the building of temples and monuments. For the most part, everyone in Sumer had certain rights under the law. However, to pay for wars fought against other city-states, officials sometimes took away people's rights to their property. The officials claimed people's land, cattle, and boats, and made people pay taxes on everything, including burials. In the 2300s BC, Uru Kagina, the ruler of the city-state of Lagash, made some changes. He created laws to prevent government leaders or the wealthy from taking advantage of the poor. About 300 years later, Ur Namu, the ruler of Ur, made changes related to that city-state's laws. All of the laws were written in the form of if-then statements. Ur Namu ordered his seven laws carved onto a stone monument for all to see. This informed the people of Or of both the laws and the punishment for breaking the laws. Today, Ornamu's monument still exists. It is the oldest known record of ancient laws. Specialization and trade. As more people began living permanently in one place, they developed new ways of working together to make their lives easier. In Sumerian cities, this change happened, in part, by increased specialization in the division of labor. When people specialized, they learned all of the information and skills necessary to do one job well. Then, people traded their services or the goods that they made with others. A few people studied to become priests, government officials, doctors, and scribes. Managers and government officials supervised the work of others. They oversaw irrigation, building projects, and the storage and distribution of food. They also were responsible for schools and tax collection. Most officials were specially trained as scribes. Scribes kept records, wrote letters for others, and wrote down stories and songs. Because scribes controlled information, they became very powerful. Sumerian craft workers used natural resources to make everyday objects and luxury goods. Jewelers used lapis lazuli, a highly prized blue stone, to fashion necklaces. Carpenters built ships out of wood brought from other places. These ships then carried goods up and down the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Still, others trained as weavers, potters, stonemasons, leather workers, 
bricklayers, and metalworkers. Merchants bought and sold goods to make a living. Sumerian merchants traded with the Fertile Crescent and even as far away as the Mediterranean Sea. The Sumerians traded what they had in surplus, wheat, barley, and metal tools. In return, they got resources they wanted, including wood, salt, precious stones, and raw copper and tin. Pleasing the Gods Sumerians did not know what caused events in nature. They could not predict dust storms, swarms of insects, or floods. However, they fully understood that when these forces of nature hit, they must lose their crops, their homes, or even their lives. Sumerians worshipped gods or deities that they believed could control nature. In the hopes of avoiding natural disasters, they offered gifts of animals, fruits, and grains to the deities. They hoped that their gifts would persuade the deities to protect them. The Sumerians believed in thousands of gods. The most important were the air god, Enlil, and the water god, Enki, who was also the god of wisdom. Social structure. Over time, ancient Sumerian society became divided into social classes or groups with different levels of importance. The highest social class in Sumer was made up of the king and his family, nobles, priests, and military leaders. Most Sumerians were members of the middle class, which included merchants, scribes, craft workers, and farmers. Sumerians were not locked into a certain class for their entire life. Instead, successful people could rise to a higher class. Slaves were at the bottom of Sumerian society. Often, enemies in battle became slaves. Also, Sumerians who owed money could sell themselves into slavery. After working off their debt, they could buy back their freedom. Sumerian women had more rights and freedoms than women in other ancient civilizations. In addition to running their households, Sumerian women could own property, run businesses, divorce cruel husbands, and train to be priestesses or scribes.